Hi there, Jamie Good here, wineandrack.com, and I'm going to be tasting some wine, um, as I usually do on video, and this time I'm going to look at Alsace. Alsace is um, a region I forget about far too often. I really like the wines, but it's not a region whose wines I regularly drink. But um, I've got four of them here, all from different grape varieties. Now Alsace is unusual of, among the, the leading French regions in that it, it labels its wines by grape variety. That's a kind of new world thing to do, but Alsace has been doing that for a while. And this first one is a Pinot Gris from Leon Bayer, and it's a 2008 vintage. One thing about Alsace wines is it's often it's quite hard to tell what, exactly what sort of wine you're getting. Um, sometimes they can be quite sweet, other times they can be bone dry, and usually there's no indication on the label of, of which is which you're going to get, so you can be up for some surprises if, if, you're, if you're unlucky. This is a um, peachy, quite honeyed, a bit grapey. It's dry, but there's some fruit richness here. I like it, it's nice. It's, um, it's got a really rich fruitiness to it, and maybe there's a hint of sort of smoked bacon as well, which is um, a, a telltale sign of Alsace um, Pinot Gris. Um, yeah, I think this is a really interesting wine. It's, it's got some fruit sweetness, but it's, it's a dry style. There's lots of um, lots of things going on there. There's lots of flavour, but it's not unbalanced anyway. So I think that's a really good interesting food friendly um, Pinot Gris. Um, next variety we're moving to Riesling. This is Kunz Bass um, Riesling Tradition 2008. I do like Alsace Riesling. Um, so I like this wine. Mm, it's quite interesting. Very very fruity again. There's some savouriness there, but also some sweetness. Mm. It's lemony, fresh, zingy, quite herby. A nice fusion of sweet fruit and fresh herbiness. That's another hit for me. Good wine. Dry in style but with some fruit sweetness again. So, moving on, I move to Muscat. Now Muscat is a, the grape variety that tends to taste of grapes when it's made to wine. Now Alsace Muscats are often quite interesting, but they're, they're kind of overlooked. You know, Riesling and Pinot Gris tend to get all the glory in Alsace. And this has got this sort of very floral, perfumed, Slightly musky, grapey, Turkish delight smell. Yeah, Muscat's one of the grape varieties that's known as a terpenic grape variety because one of the characteristic um, um, aromatic signatures is, is a class of chemicals called terpenes. And that's what you smell when you smell the very grapey character. Gewürztraminer is, is another one, but that's a terpenic variety. It's interesting. It's, uh, it's from Hugel, who are very um, well respected Alsace producers. It's 2008 vintage. It's the Muscat tradition. It's bone dry on the palate, but the nose smells sweet. So there's a slight disconnect there between the exotically sweet nose and the bone dry, minerally high acid palate. I quite like it. I think it's um, an acquired taste. It's a bit unusual, but um, it's not a bad wine. Um, so, sort of semi thumbs up for that. <clears throat> I guess it would be good with sort of exotic, spicy Asian foods. Final one of the four. We're moving to Gewurztraminer. And Gewurztraminer is the 
the most in your face, easy to get, and one of them, the outside Ferratis. It's very, um, very distinctive. This is from Carved of Turkheim, which is the, probably the best cooperative in the region. And again, it's 2008 vintage. It's got a characteristic nose. Um, rose petals, light cheese, Turkish delight. And this is a bit of sweetness in the palate as well. It's not overtly sweet, but there's a little bit of sweetness. Um, very attractive. Lovely purity of fruit, really quite delicious. And, and these aren't expensive wines, all these wines. They're not the, the most expensive Alsace wines, but they're all really very good. I think we should be um, drinking more Alsace wine. They're just such attractive white wines. So thumbs up for that one. A little um, postscript here on closures. Um, wines like this would show up cork tanked very obviously. And it's interesting to note that these four wines have all sealed the alternative closures. The last one, um, a screw cap with a sarin X liner. That's the, the white liner inside the screw cap. Um, which has a little bit more oxygen transmission than the silver looking liner, which is a tin sarin liner. Um, the first one was sealed with a synthetic cork, um, Noma cork. And the other two, if I can get one of these corks out, are sealed with a very cork like looking um, DMs. This is a um, DM5. Basically, it's a, a technical cork that's made with bits of cork that have been cleaned from any contamination and then put back together again. And this is a taint free cork that really looks quite like a natural cork. Um, and two of the wines are sealed with this. So it's quite interesting to see that the Alsace producers are, are really thinking quite logically about what sort of closures to use in their wines. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, it's been great being with you. You've been a great audience. See you soon. Bye.